Um, welcome, everybody, to the Open Government Hack Night, episode number 143. Uh, this is uh, Chicago's place to build, share, and learn about civic tech. Uh, I was, I've been waiting until later to do this, but I'll do it now. Raise your hand if this is your first hack night. Welcome to all you new folks. Yay. Um, I'm curious. I'm um, curious, some of you who uh, raised your hand, how did you hear about this event? Anybody? From that guy? Everybody heard from that guy? Anybody else? From here. From here. Two friends. Anything else? Last week. A classmate? Okay, so like word of mouth, good. So the kids think we're cool. That's great. Uh, so, uh, so for those of you who are new, uh, we uh, get together every week in this uh, room, and we uh, have tonight we have a presentation um, from uh, Kyla and Robert about a uh, thing called High Chicago, which we'll hear about in, uh, in a moment. Uh, and then we have basically this is a space for people to get some work done, and learn about civic technology, and build stuff. Uh, and learn about open data is going to meet people who are also interested in doing all those things. So uh, the first part of the evening is always uh, sort of more structured, where we have the presentations. We'll go around the room in the rooms first, and then we'll have an open floor for announcements. And then after that, then we'll kind of break out into different groups and work on stuff for the remainder of the evening uh, until about 10 o'clock or so. This one. Oh, this is really on screen. Okay, so direct your attention to the screen. Uh, so uh, we'll get into the, uh, the sort of the structure part of the evening now, I think, and then move on to uh, the presentation in a moment. So the first thing, like I said, is we're going to go around and introduce yourselves. I think it's an important part of the event because everybody here is cool in their own way, and it's good to just know who's in the room. So I'll go ahead and start that. Uh, so my name is Derek Peter. I'm a open data web developer at DataMade. Uh, I'm one of the founders of this group. And I like to build stuff with open data. Uh, My name is Christopher Winker. I am the Copa America Regional Coordinator and a uh, consultant with the Sports Co Columbia. Hi, everyone. My name is Kyla Williams. I'm the Director of Operations at the Smart Chicago Collaborative. I'm also the CEO and founder of a small consulting firm called Technical Community. Let's kind of go this way if we can. Hi, I'm Robert Friedman, uh, Portfolio Strategist for Hive Chicago. Hi everyone, I'm Kathy Day. I'm a developer at Datamate. Hello, I'm Mitesh Patekar and I'm a graduate student uh, doing computer science at IIT. Hi, my name is Aditya Gates. So I'm pursuing Masters in Computer Science at IIT. Hi, I'm Aditya. I'm pursuing Masters in IIT at IIT. Hi, I'm Aditya. I'm pursuing Masters in IIT at Hi, I'm Tracy. I'm Kelly Greer. I'm the general manager of Divi. I don't code, but I appreciate you doing this. Steve Advance, uh, reporter, transportation reporter. My name is Justin Nelly. I'm a student at Chicago and uh, Gino Bernardi, Jasper Developer. So if you share the um, student at IIT. Uh, my name is Dave Field, I'm the uh, coordinator of the high school programs at the Fayette North Organization Museum. I'm Matt Reed, I'm an Iowa Stub or Chief of Staff. Uh, I'm Mark Bordo, I'm a back end engineer. I'm Paul Mack, I work in software integrations. Johnson, uh, I'm a data specialist at uh, the city of one of the 
Hi, I'm Austin Stack. Uh, I'm a sales professional for a quarterly club of marketing from all the other marketing. Hello, my name is Earl Johnson, and I work in Boston, except I'm a branch manager. My name is Mike Joyce. I'm a developer at just office on the suburbs. I'm Derek Burke. I'm a grad student at Park Boston. Hi, thanks. This is a little bit of a grant for a couple of signs of the grant. I'm Zev, I'm a PhD student in Africa in Chicago, so we're moving towards Australia. I'm Tom Nellick, I'm a software engineer at Top Game for Chicago. We did a grant to the UIC for the science. Uh, okay, well, um, uh, I'm a and I'm the uh, social media consultant for uh, the Internet <laughs> 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 That position has been eliminated. <laughs> 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 Hi everyone, my name is Dane Pregnante, I'm an investment analyst with Data Science and Machine Learning, and I'm here for the Machine Learning Study Group. Uh, I am Drew Johnson, and I'm an undergrad here in Africa as a major at Swallow University. I'm Dan Gasso, I lead the Tutor Mentor Connection and Community Connection, but I'm not involved with it. You guys are talking about it. I like to translate with that. I like to translate with that. So this is open floor for anybody who wants to sort of share anything with this group. It could be a 
project, could be a job opening, could be any kind of announcement or event. Uh, I think we actually have one plan. Do you want to do the debut one right now? Or up to you. Here, why don't you get it? We'll get it queued up. Um, uh, and then, Jamie, you have something. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, so those things are Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 All right. I'll be really, I'll be uh, just a few minutes here. I'm the general manager of Divi, Chicago Spike Share System. We were here about a year ago for our first Divi data challenge, which we just launched. Um, when we had about six months worth of data. We launched in June of 2013, and I was here. I think last January or February we did this the first time. I'm here to announce that we're going to do the Divi Data Challenge for the second year in a row. And what that is, is we're releasing 3.2 million trips of anonymized, or 3.2 million anonymized trips uh, that have been taken since our launch. So they're on our website, divibikes.com slash data challenge. You can find out all the details. And what we're doing is we're encouraging the developer community, data scientists, designers to take all that data or take parts of that data and visualize it in an interesting way, whether it's an infographic or an app or uh, a website or a video, whatever it may be, and uh, come up with something interesting to show. So I just want to talk a little bit about Divi. We have 3.2 million trips so far. That's split between members and 24-hour pass holders. And this is all in the data set, and I'll go through the specifics of, of what's there. 6.7 million miles traveled, and we're currently at 300 stations. This year, we're going to be expanding to 475 stations. So right now, we have about a year and a half pass worth of data on the website for you to play with and, and hack and just have fun with. This year, we have 3.2 million trips. The deadline to submit is March 20th, so it gives you about a month to play with it. And there'll be winners chosen in a variety of categories. So we're looking for the most beautiful one, the most insightful one, the most creative, lots of different uh, ways to express yourself. And the winners get a Microsoft hardware and software package, the details of which will be announced shortly. And we're also going to take out a full page ad in the red eye to announce the winners at the end of March or early April. The data itself is, is pretty basic. So it's the trip start day and time, trip end day and time, uh, the station name for the beginning and end of the trip, whether that person was a member, whether they're a 24-hour pass holder. And if they're a member, what we have is also data on their gender as well as their year of birth. So uh, it's a pretty simple data set. And I think that that's good if, if you're a beginner. This is a great data set to play with and maybe do your first project. But if you're advanced as well, there's some really interesting things you can do. This is the web page. You can go to divibikes.com data challenge. And I just want to run briefly through last year's winner just to give you a flavor of some of the things that people have created with the data. Last year was only three quarters of a million trips, so this year there's a lot more to play with. But here is the, the overall winner that combined beauty, insight, comprehensiveness, and creativity. As you can see, there's a lot of, you can't see the specifics, but there's a lot of different ways they express the data in terms of the trip by day, the most popular stations. Uh, you can see it visualized in a map. People also talked about the times of day, you know, when, when trips peaked and when they did. Uh, really interesting expressions in this one. You can also check this out on the website. In terms of most creative, this is also probably the most creepy. It's a Divi <laughs> dating site where you can say who you're looking for, if you're looking for a man or a woman, what age, what neighborhood. And it will tell you the Divi station to go to and what time of day to check it out <laughs> to have the likely, highest likelihood of finding that mate. So some call it creepy, we call it a career. Another creative uh, winner was this one, which put the Divi trips to sound. So you could select certain stations and it would play the day, and there'd be a sound for every trip taken from one of those stations throughout the day. You can also check this out on our website. Most comprehensive, you can zoom in on this if you go to our website, but you can see a really interesting expression that combines uh, these are neighborhoods listed here, it's all the time of the day, weekdays and weekends. So it really differentiates lots of different ways to slice the data and looks very cool too. And then finally, most insightful, this was more of like a paper, um, but with really interesting charts and talked about some of the patterns in terms of you know people using this. 
as a couple? Are people using this in pairs? Are they using it alone? Uh, you know, what kinds of routes are they going to? And it was a little more analytical as, as opposed to visual, but really interesting stuff. And again, this is all available on the website. So I, I promise I wouldn't take too much of your time. Uh, I guess if you do have questions, these guys will probably have some good answers afterwards as well. Stephen, um, you want to say something? Who entered last year in the challenge? Because there were 99 submissions. 99 submissions, yeah. Every year? Wow. Wow. Right. Okay, so they must all be at home right now. Yeah. Um, so I run the transportation breakout group, but we have a, a, a big project that we're working on. So I don't have any, I'm not going to be spending time on the Diddy challenge or to help you get to speed, but I do have resources from last year that I helped that I put together that should get you jump started on entering this year's competition. Um, and so we'll be, those will be on our Google group um, and also there are other ways you can also find me on Twitter. But uh, it would be awesome if someone in the next 30 minutes thought that they wanted to volunteer to be a Diddy breakout group for the next month and a half. So give that some thought, so I'll ask you again in 30 minutes. <laughs> All right, so tweet at us, email us. There's uh, data at divvybikes.com if you have any questions. But thanks for giving me the time, and I hope the challenge. Thank you. Uh, sorry. <laughs> soft drinks, you're welcome to. Past the fridges, there's a little hallway with two soda machines set to zero dollars. <coughs> welcome to use them. Wi-Fi information is on the board over here. It has changed since last week. So if you haven't in there already, it's wrong. Yeah. Nice. Uh, oh, also, while you're sick, well, uh, along with that, when you're done in here, like please put your plates away in the uh, uh, kitchen <laughs> clear about yourselves. And don't go into like the work area, because people like work here. Hang out in here and then the cat. Uh, any other announcements? Uh, okay, great. Well, then I think our presenters can come on up and we can get that started. Uh, so we're going to hear uh, from Robert and Kyla about Hive Chicago. Uh, so here we go. Yeah. strategist for our Hive Chicago, which is the Chicago uh, location of the uh, global Hive learning networks. 
Um, we're one of almost a dozen at this point uh, as our network of networks grows, sites where um, motivated civic leaders, educators, um, just vested interests, and tech companies convene together to really try to reimagine and transform what learning looks like in a city in the 21st century. That's this coming century, right? Yeah, this one. Um, and the idea being that we really believe that learning isn't something that happens just in the classroom and isn't only recognized by grades and by uh, you know degrees and certificates, but that learning is a process that happens anytime, anywhere, and we should be able to recognize it when it does, no matter where or how or when it happens, right? And so what does that mean to acknowledge, to recognize learning anytime, anywhere? What does that mean to create an environment, an ecosystem that encourages young people to learn inside and out? the classroom that we're exploring. Sometimes this framework that we use to talk about learning is called connected learning, um, which resonates with the idea of being connected online or connected digitally, but is really more about the fact that there are, we need to build systems that connect the different experiences that young people have, whether it's peer-to-peer -peer learning, learning at home, learning that's interest-driven, Right, so it's connected in the sense that it really connects up the different kinds and the different people that help to cultivate and curate learning for young people. Um, so Hive Chicago, which is one of the many hives, there's a hive in New York, Toronto, uh, Pittsburgh, Bay Area, um, there's a hive in Indonesia, there's a hive in India, uh, they're still kind of working things out, but there's a lot of, there's a hive in Kansas City, Hive Chattanooga, so you get the point. Um, we're global and across the North America, more, uh, more, more like concentrated. But Hive, the Hive Chicago iteration, and it looks similar in these other places, but also different, um, is a uh, collection of 64 member organizations in the city of Chicago. Those range from, actually, before I tell you more about Chicago, I just want to say one last thing which is that uh, the high learning networks, the global network, is uh, facilitated and curated by Mozilla Foundation. And in some cities like Chicago and New York and Toronto, uh, high staff like myself are actually um, employees of the Mozilla Foundation. Um, Mozilla's uh, stake in the game to some extent is that um, connecting young people to these different experiences almost necessarily requires making use in an intelligent way of modern technology, in particular of the web, to facilitate that information sharing and those connections. So building web literacy among young people is one of the strategies that Mozilla uses to connect young people um, to new learning experiences. So that's Mozilla's stake in the game. Going back to Chicago, um, Chicago is a collection of 64 member organizations, and those range from very small communities, organizations of one or half a staff person with no budget to citywide agencies like the public libraries or the Chicago Park District. So there's a lot of different stakeholders in the game, um, and they're all coming together to sort of reimagine what those learning experiences look like in school and at our convenings and when we actually get that the uh, granular level of who's having these conversations, who's doing the work, it ranges from the executive directors of some of these organizations to the people in the classroom with the young people doing the learning. It's a very diverse group of people in different positions at their organizations and a diverse group of motivations. Um, so High Chicago uh, is bringing all these people together and really asking how do we connect up these experiences. But there are real challenges to doing this work. When we talk about helping young people follow um, their, so actually, sorry, I didn't prepare the speeches. So I have to backtrack occasionally. Uh, I think before I tell you about the challenges, it's more to tell you what our major goals are. So we kind of three goals that we work collaboratively together on. These are member-generated, member-source goals. Um, and I actually have, I count, uh, three official members in the house right now. So we've got Smart Chicago Collaborative Representative Kyle here, 
um, David Bill from the Nature Museum, and Simeon from Utopia. Um, so they're, they're actually interested in asking some more questions, follow up after done. But these members have generated some goals for our network. What do we have to actually, you know, what are the things that are important to creating this ecosystem? They include more equitable access to learning opportunities. So what does that mean? If it's not obvious, it's about spreading out the different resources that we have available to facilitate learning in a way that is more equitable. So connecting young people who are traditionally underserved by learning opportunities to those opportunities. Creating pathways through learning, and that means that connected piece, which is really saying learning's not a series of disconnected events that happen randomly in random places, but it's about creating a trail that a young person can follow to pursue their own interests. And the third is being innovative. Um, and when we mean innovative, we don't mean just for innovation's sake, but that when we push ourselves to try new things, right, that's when we break the boundaries that constrain us in our current model. So it's being innovative when we need to be, um, but also always pushing ourselves to break those boundaries um, that constrain us in our current model which is a very disconnected experience for many young people that is not equitably distributed. But those are really, really aspirational goals, right? So like, when does one ever attain true equity in any case? As soon as you do, something else becomes unfair. It's something you're always kind of pursuing. And so to get us to this like never-ending goal of establishing a more equitable uh, distribution of resources in Chicago, we wanted to set some very actionable, um, actionable, like, uh, outcomes, things that we could work on, challenges, identify challenges that are going to get us towards those big goals. So we actually identified um, six different challenges, uh, which we call moonshots. Um, and our moonshots are, uh, you know, it's, it's actually using that um, that idea of shooting for the moon. Um, they're they're real big, lofty challenges. They're hard. But there are things that we can kind of measure more, more explicitly and have a better sense of where we're going to get. Just like our goals are sourced by our members, our moonshots were as well. So some of this is a little hard or whatever. I don't, I didn't prepare slides, so you're going to have to make do with my emails. But um, my links to our website. But the, uh, the, the different, the six different challenges we identified, six different moonshots, are around um, a school hive connection. A lot of our members are not part of the traditional school system. They're out-of-school time providers. They're community-based organizations. So it's very important that we bridge that connection to school, which is something we're working on. Um, engaging and educating parents. So this is bringing parents into the conversation about education and making them an active player in, their young person's, uh, in the young person's life um, when it comes to learning. Um, engaging young people in a meaningful way in their own education, so bringing their voice to the table to have them provide feedback on what we're providing them, right? So it's more of a conversation about their experience and less of a top-down hierarchical structure. Um, something we call the ultimate hub or the on-ramps group, and that's really about connecting and serving these young people with information about their learning. So whereas the youth, the youth voice piece is about bringing their um, perspective into the conversation. This is about getting that information out to them about the things that they can do, helping facilitate those connections. Transportation. This is a real issue around equity and around connectedness. A lot of young people in Chicago cannot get out of their neighborhood to reach those opportunities that are all concentrated downtown in museums or in other really cool places that we get to enjoy if we have that freedom of motion. So how do we create solutions for young people who are trapped by the transportation constraints of their city? And then lastly, um, what's called the think tank or data group in the hive, and that's how does our network make use of data? Um, how do we make use of information and data sources to inform how we build solutions to these issues? Um, a lot of this is around building competency. Some of this is about real concrete solutions to problems. Uh, so these are our shots. This is our framework. Why do we have this framework? Well, one of the things that we're really trying to do is create um, a, a work environment for adult professionals in education that feels like an open source collaboration, that feels like a project that anyone can get involved in, make a small contribution to, make a big contribution to, become a leader of, but that's sort of open for anyone's engagement. 
This is a work in progress, but the member source goals, the member source challenges, and the curation that we do on our website are all intended to make it a community investment, uh, a project that uh, has a strong community investment, so that any one of our members is feeling like they can contribute to, and is providing information to the community that invites others to get engaged as well, so that anyone else can get engaged. Um, so let me tell you quickly about how you can get engaged. Um, and an event we had recently and how that went. And then I'd like actually Kyla and David to say a few things about their connections to the Hive. Um, so, and I want to give you a few examples of what some of these things are. How am I doing on time? Good? Chris, somebody asked. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so, uh, actually, let me, let me back up and tell you about this event we just had. So we have these challenges and uh, I actually, um, I have a video of the event um, I'm not connected to speakers, so I have to do that somehow. It should, it should still play. Um, yeah, do you think it'll, like, there's no sound, there, right? No, there's, we've done the one before. Yeah, is this thing carrying? It's a mini DVI, so I don't think it carries any sound. It would have to be HDMI. I actually don't have an HDMI, though. So, uh, whatever, I'm going to talk over it. Um, so we just had this event, it was called High Chicago Buzz. Uh, it was really cool. It was at New 1647. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's an amazing space. You should check it out. It's in Pilsen. Um, and it's a community, uh, you know, hacker space, um, maker space, community center for young people, and a startup innovation kind of engine for uh, the neighborhood of Pilsen and beyond throughout Chicago. Um, we had this event where we brought our communities to met together as in, in the spirit of a hack day and asked our members to contribute. A couple of you were there, and I really appreciated Josh coming out for that event, um, and uh, and others uh, who were there were made an awesome contribution. So I wanted to give you a sense of like the kind of solutions we're talking about. David is going to give you a very specific one for a group that he leads, but I wanted to give you another example, which is around transportation. So um, the transportation group actually broke out into three solutions. There's one group that's working on student produced public service announcements for young people. They're as obvious but important as things like educating their peers about bus trackers. A lot of young people don't even know that those resources are available or that they can track the bus on their phone. And so in many cases, they're not showing up to the bus on time or they're missing trains that they could make and getting 10 or 15 minutes late to something important because they actually don't even know that they can keep track of that information. So some kids made videos around that. Um, another group that was being uh, supported by a developer from Zooniverse built a very simple data collection tool that educators could use at the start of any program to assess their young person's trip to or from their program. Just like the Divi data presents a particularly powerful um, snapshot of how, young, of how people get around in the city of Chicago, the data that we could collect from young people about their tri trips to these programs can provide a very powerful tool for us to communicate what those challenges are and what are the major routes that they're using. That could influence policy. So something as simple as a small tool, a little app, a BuzzFeed style quiz that asks young people about how they got there can be a powerful policy tool once we collect that information. And then the third one that I thought was really interesting was an Uber-like solution for shared ride opportunity, uh, shared ride app for young people. So a way for program providers to actually secure rides for their youth, right? To identify routes, hire drivers, and track their youth along those path, along those trajectories, so that they can assure their young people have a safe trip to their location in a way that, um, and also know who's coming and who's not. So it's a really cool solution. It's called Waggers. They're working on it. It's something to do with Waggle Bees, um, and they're they're continuing that work now. So these are the kinds of interesting you know, youth-driven or adult-driven, tech-driven, or just, you know, standard media-driven solutions to some of these problems that we're working on. I wanted to give you a flavor of them. Um, so finally, how to get engaged. If you go to our website, uh, you can learn a lot about us. It's, it's not the hottest site ever, but we got a cool map of all our membership. You'll see where the concentration is and what we mean when we're talking about challenge of equitable distribution of resources and about transportation. That struggle is real and it's very much uh, visualized in the map of our membership, which are the major um, 
learning providers in the city of Chicago. It doesn't have every library site or every park district site, which, by the way, could be a thing we could use some help with. Just getting like that information would be really interesting and powerful. Um, you can learn about our membership. You can also sign up for our mailing list if you want to learn more about how we're moving ahead and what we're doing. Just go to Connect, Join Us, and you can sign up for our mailing list. Um, you can also attend our monthly meetups from 9 a.m. to noon, uh, once a month, every third Thursday. It's very regular. Usually at the Howard Washington Library, we have a monthly meetup. You can come learn about what we're doing and what our educators are doing. Sign up for mailing lists, hang out at our meetups, definitely a way to go, follow us on Twitter, um, whatever. And connect with us that way because we could use many of your contributions. So I'm going to let Kyle give some examples maybe of what Smart Chicago is doing with the Hive and the kind of supports they're providing. And I'm going to give, let David give an example of the kind of solutions we can still use some support in building. I think you'll build building. So at least you uh, might get two ideas about projects that are ongoing we can get involved with. I'll be around if you want to talk some more about the Hive and about how we work, our operating principles on here. Um, Kyle, do you want to say a few words about Smart? Smart's rolling. Yeah. Hi, awesome. Thank you. Sorry. Hey, y'all. <laughs> I'm Kyla Williams, as I said earlier, I'm the Director of Operations for the Smart Chicago Collaborative. The Smart Chicago Collaborative is a civic tech organization responsible for improving the lives of Chicagoans using technology. Big job, small staff to do that. We do our work around three areas of focus. One is access. We really believe that folks in the city of Chicago should have access to the internet regardless of their ability to pay for it. The second one is skills. When you're on the internet, we want you to build skills, whether that's you're a CEO of a Fortune 500 company and you need to improve your technology um, department within your company, or you're someone's grandmother who's just learning how to get on Facebook and talk to her, her grandchildren. We want to be able to build skills um, in our community. And then data, which is what we deal with here and guys deal with mostly here uh, in the half night group is that we really want to make data play because of course you give someone a big JSON file or some big long Excel spreadsheet most of us will cross our eyes and in my case I start to cry so <laughs> we want to be able to take data and make it useful for regular people so we can have hospitals be able to show their patients where they um, are in their community health um, profile. We want to be able to show folks in education where their children are scoring at and, and use data in a visualized way to make it easier for us to understand and be able to tell stories, make improvements, and all of that stuff. One of the things that I love about Smart Chicago, so just a little background about me. So um, I, too, have a PhD. I just don't claim it because, you know, got to keep you cool. So, um, <laughs> I have a PhD in social work. I have a master's degree in counseling. And my bachelor's degree is in uh, biology pre-med. I did go to medical school for a short period of time. That whole blood thing kind of freaked me out, though. So I had to drop out quickly. But the one thing I do when I tell my story is that I'm not a technologist. You know, I didn't go to anybody's cold school. I'm not a, you know, a computer science person. I'm just a regular old geeky nerd girl who likes things to work cool. And that is my interest in technology. And I came to work at Smart Chicago to work with Dan O'Neill because he, too, has a lot of internet technology geeky experience, but does not have that formal education. And so we feel like that's kind of the way that we all intersect and, and it's interesting that we are running this technology organization and we don't have what one would consider to be a traditional technical background. We at Smart Chicago have lots of stuff going on. We have went from an organization of one, starting with Dan O'Neill in August of 2011, to two when I came on in December of 2011, and now we're up to four. Here we are, February of 2015, but we've done 
lots of projects all over the city of Chicago. We just redesigned our website, so please check that out, smartchicagocollaborative.org. And we have a lot of things going on work-related. We align ourselves under these five kind of groupings of projects and programs, uh, health, education, justice, the ecosystem, and what we call special initiatives. Because Smart Chicago is what we uh, have termed an affiliate organization of the Hive Chicago Network, meaning that we are not like a child-serving direct type of organization, unlike maybe uh, an after-school program, so an after-school manager, something like that, but that we do have a vested interest in the ecosystem of education here and connected learning. And so our high programs, we have three of them that we're currently engaged with high on. Our first one is Civic Summer. Uh, Civic Summer is a cool, cool program. Our internet, okay, there we go. So it was an experimental summer jobs program for teens focused on civics, media, and technology. So basically we get a bunch of kids during the summertime with our partners, which is Make the Challenge, um, Free Spirit Media, and the Adler Planetarium. And we do a kind of civic tech uh, program for them during the summer months. And then every Friday we do what's called Mass Action Days, where we work on things that are important to you and we try to pair technical solutions for them to either address those things or to get gain, gain a greater understanding or to you know, impact some change. How many people are familiar with the app Expungio? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> friend here is Kathy Dane. So Expungio is one of those things that came out of the, the mass action days. And we are looking for more solutions and more folks to join us this summer as we assist these youth with, you know, maneuvering through their lives and using technology as a solution to improve it and make it better. City Summer was uh, funded by the Hive last summer, and so we hope that uh, this summer coming up in June <laughs> will be uh, higher and we'll probably be adding on another partner to assist us. If you're interested in this work, please come to us, help us, because we do these curriculum exercises ourselves. And we're always looking for cool people that like kids and want to help us to proctor ex exercises and, and um, opportunities for them to learn and grow. Um, our other high um, project is one that I'm pretty proud of. It's called Time to Tech. Yeah, there we go. So Time to Tech is a um, new partnership between Smart Chicago and the Chicago Public Library Foundation. What we have found it, with nonprofits especially is that they have very little time and very little resources and budget to have their own employees, the folks that are within their organization, to be highly trained on technical things. And, and it may not even be like the super hard technical thing like a WordPress. It may just be very simple things like Google Plus, which haunts me, or, you know, Facebook or, you know, LinkedIn and using that better. And, and because they don't have the resources or the infrastructure to support bringing someone in uh, and they're not aware of any other community based <laughs> opportunity those organizations are falling well behind as far as growing in their technical attitude. So we proposed an opportunity, and we called it Time to Tech, to allow folks within our networks, and it doesn't mean just the persons who come to our meetups, but folks within their organizations to come and receive free technology training in an attempt to raise their technical aptitude. We have a, a our first one is coming up on March 31, and uh, we will be advertising that this Thursday at our, our meetup with those members. And it's gonna be around WordPress. The site that Robert uh, said was not so good, but it's the site that we use for Hive is a WordPress-based website. There's portfolios on there for all the organizations. 
And normally this is what happens at the meetup. Robert comes in, he's just like, okay, WordPress, put your portfolio in, do this, put some graphics, upload some videos, put your schedules, make it all happen. Yeah, you do it just like that. Just like that. And then everybody just starts saying, what is he talking about? And then there's a deadline, and then Robert's sending out the, the, the email saying, what happened to all y'all putting stuff in WordPress? There's no pictures, there's no videos, and everybody's too ashamed to say, well, I don't really know how. So we're going to assist the membership with becoming WordPress mini experts, at least enough to be able to adhere to our hive requirements and maybe be able to take some of that knowledge back into the organizations and you work you use WordPress as a, a mechanism to have greater reach and outreach and all those other cool things. Lastly, our last program, and I'll bring David up so that he can talk about it. This was the, the program, because I get excited. I don't know if y'all can tell, I don't get excited. But the High Mapping Cooperative was something that I stood up in the meeting and was like, we're going to win the Nobel Peace Prize. So, because <laughs> this is something that is so exciting, where we are uh, partnering with the uh, Chicago Academy of Science and the, the No Art Museum, Sweetwater Foundation, and we are trying to collectively recommend best practices for you who uh, use mapping tools around things scientific. And so it's very cool. We have lots of conversations about where this can go. And we've had a, even a greater conversation about making this part of what we are calling the Open Science Network or Society or something. We're still working that out. But I'll bring David up so we can talk more about this particular project. This one was a new one as of last year, and some very cool things happened as a result of that. So I'll bring up David. All right. Um, well, I'm David from the Nature Museum. Um, I actually didn't plan to talk at all tonight, but I'll do my best. So um, the Hive Mapping Cooperative is basically um, we're trying to look at open source free data collection, mobile data collection and data sharing software to kind of create, uh, to have youth collaborating across programs on uh, questions about like urban ecosystems, community ecology, so local issues. Um, so that's one that we're actively working on, trying to create this sort of basically collaboration between youth and disparate programs in different, different parts of the city. Um, so that's one that we're pretty excited about. Um, we're still working our way through it. Um, we're still using a lot of different, you know, free uh, mobile data collection apps that, uh, that we use out there. Um, visualization stuff that's been a little challenging as well, but we're learning a lot as we're going through. Um, so that one's a cool one. I'm happy to talk about that for a long time. Um, the other things that uh, I think we can highlight are some of the things that we're working on um, for some of these types of called the moonshots, where we could definitely use some. Kind of direct assistance tonight. Um, I am not a programmer or coder or anything like that. Um, I work with teenagers. Um, but one of the things that uh, we were working on, one of these moonshots called the Ultimate Help. Um, and there's two aspects of that that we've been working on. One was looking at tools for aggregation and dissemination of learning opportunities. Um, so basically, we're in a situation right now where we're Posting opportunities in multiple places, um, and it really is kind of hard to get the word out to all the users that we want to get the word out to. Um, and basically, we're trying to eliminate some of that repetition of like I'm posting here, 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 and here. I'm sending an email to this network over here. I'm sending this flyer to this network over here. So one of the things we're working on at the High Chicago Buzz uh, kind of hacked it. I was looking at what tools exist for aggregation and dissemination. Um, one thing that came out of that was Karen Jeffrey from For All Rubrics um, kind of piloted a RSS aggregator. Um, so using RSS tools to kind of have a way that I could just post once. I have this program that I'm running at the Nature Museum, post that once, and then that can get distributed out to various uh, networks um, and adults of influence. Because what we found in kind of surveying youth is that 
a lot of youth are not going on the internet to find opportunities. They're basically learning about it from teachers, mentors, parents, things like that. So that's one thing that um, we're working on, um, and you know, we're kind of in the early stages of that. Um, so there is the aggregation of that information and the dissemination of that information, and also um, one thing that we didn't quite get to are some of the visualization tools we can actually use with that. Um, because me, as someone who's looking for opportunities, sees like these awesome visualizations. Um, I just don't know how to make them. Uh, but that's something that I think could be useful for you know, people that are looking for opportunities. Uh, so that's one thing. And then uh, something that we didn't get to on the uh, High Chicago Buzz Hack Day was kind of this idea of mapping out the different conduits and nodal points um, that is spreading out to some. Um, and how they how they tend to disseminate that information to their different youths. So, you know, there's a certain way that if you want to get flyers to the Chicago Public Library, there's like a protocol like you send three copies to the branch, and then they send out to all the other small branches. Um, you know, certain churches or organizations might have a weekly newsletter. So, um, one thing that we were trying to do was just kind of get uh, a baseline of like crowdsourced and then information from within the network. Like here are our networks for sending out information. Um, but something that we could definitely use help with, or I can help with, is just kind of pulling some of that data that already exists on like the city data portal. Um, so I know that there's all of the library locations and field houses and churches like that are probably on the, on the data portal. So even just helping navigate some of that could be uh, helpful tonight. I guess I'm that's about it. <laughs> so um, that's us together and collaboratively. Um, my last little bit of information is that we are gearing up for um, a three-year big project um, at the Smart Chicago Collaborative called the Connect Chicago Challenge. There's lots of opportunity for the growth of programs there. Um, Damon Drummer, those who are familiar with him, is the managing director of that program and now part of the Smart Chicago Collaborative. We need developers, coders, and web designers. We need you to come and help us to make the Connect Chicago Challenge the best thing and really a model program for digital skill learning, acquisition, data development. We have needs. And we want to allow you to help us to help ourselves. <laughs> so, so please, 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 I do have business cards because I do have to run today because it's Mardi Gras and y'all know what happens on Mardi Gras. But um, I want you guys to get, get in contact with me and please, if you have a skill to share, if you have an idea, check out our website. Anything and everything that you want to know about us is there. And uh, I look forward to meeting with you and working with you hopefully. And then Robert will post up. Uh, all right, so just to close out, um, you know, I told you a little bit about how you can get in touch with us, how you can get connected, our website at hivechicago.org, which isn't that bad, but I put together a lot of it, so that's why I'm not particularly proud. Um, but it's it's a it's a one resource you can use to learn a lot about us. Hivechicago.org, Hive Chicago Buzz is more about that event we had. At Hive Chicago Buzz is our Twitter handle. Um, so connect with us. But I just wanted to sort of reiterate and underline the point that there is a real need in the education community, in our civic community, to bring development talent and data analysis and visualization to an audience that doesn't have a lot of those resources available to them. Um, and there's some real big impact you could make, right? So the, the, uh, the potential for making an impact is huge because there's such a depletion of resources there, right? So if you're looking to make a big impact, Hive Chicago meetings, joining us is a way that you can get connected to programs are really needed. And I think it's it's clear, like when David's talking about like, oh, maybe we could, there's a way we could use RSS to like tell kids about events, right? That's the level we're at here, right? So there's a there's there's a huge amount of impact you can make about building that technology infrastructure. The other interesting part here is that it's sometimes hard to build educational tools because it's hard to get into the school system. The school system can be very conservative and very uh, and very mobile, right? Not innovative because they're responsible for a lot of people 
because it's politically driven sometimes. But in our organizations, we're talking about a lot of highly flexible, highly innovative organizations. People who, if you have an idea, will be excited to try your idea. In a test case, right, an opportunity for you to iterate on a product idea. So we have this affiliate membership that Ayla mentioned. Our full partner members who are eligible for fun direct funding are youth serving organizations. But affiliate members are sometimes for-profit organizations like Utopia, like For All Badges, who are building products for the education sector and need organizations that are willing to test their products, help them innovate, improve them, and get the word out about those things. So if you're part of a for-profit enterprise organization, or you're a software developer that wants to like practice a little bit, right? That's where a great connection for you. So think about membership too. I'm gonna to close with that. Thank you so much for listening to us for a good long time tonight. And I'm really excited to work with any one of you. Come see me if you have any questions. Thank you. Do you want to ask questions? Do you have two or three questions? I guys got any questions? I'm here. I have one. Yeah. yeah. So it's actually on the last point you just made, um, referencing uh, Jeff's working with schools themselves. I noticed Chicago Public Schools is not part of is that intentional or what's the relationship there? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think it's a little bit about how our network evolved and grew up. It started as a very small collaboration of museums and cultural institutions. And the natural evolution has been to aggregate more of those institutions and then the libraries and then the park district. So we're getting to a bigger scale, right? Um, CPS is a huge, I mean, it's like, it's 600,000 or 800,000 kids or something in CPS. 450? No, I heard 600 the other day, but that person may not know what they're talking about. You clearly do, my friend. I trust you. That's a lot of kids, right? And when we ask our members to tally up every kid that they've ever worked with, you know, we get to like the number like that, but only recently with the addition of some of these big organizations. So we're, we're spreading to scale, but we weren't at scale to begin with. We work with CPS, there's lots of schools in our network, and there's a lot of interest. And if you guys have heard of the Chicago City of Learning, that's an initiative that involves a lot of our partner members and is directly working with the mayor's office and this and Chicago Public Schools. So since Chicago City of Learning is a really cool resource that does connect directly with CPS. Any other questions? Thoughts? Not too much. Anything for Kyle for David? But he um, was like, you make a lot of things. Wait, what? Yeah, you make a lot of things. Oh, I do the dance. <laughs> <laughs> comment. Thank you. That's, I'll take that. Any other comments on my behavior or my speaking ability? <laughs> or my WordPress development? Yeah. All right. Okay, cool. cool. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Uh, okay, so we're going to move into our uh, civic hacking course.